Could you tell us about the art and the craft? Why is Gregorian singing so important and how do you do it? Well, it's interesting that this is um, coming after the Dr. Mooney and the four bucks because, uh, <laughs> you know, when these young people, we were the young uh, community in the late 60s who went to the Abbey, um, when we heard the Gregorian chant, we fell in love with it. Now you have to picture, some of us had left the church, many of us had never heard the chant. Uh, and this was a time after the Second Vatican Council when many religious orders were considering, should we sing in the vernacular? Should we sing in English? Do we wanna continue singing in Latin and Gregorian? And we were like, please don't ever stop singing this. Now we didn't understand the words necessarily, but it spoke in a deeper place. And that's what I think um, is part of the power of Gregorian chant is music that is that good is eternal. You know, it has been sung for centuries and I think it will into the future. And that's what I think is one thing that gets people is the eternality of chant. And then it's also universal. I think you're in touch with the whole world and every culture. And the chant itself is such a brilliant form of music. Now, keep in mind, I you know, had never sung the chant. I couldn't read music when I entered, and, but I loved it. And so when Lady Abbess, our foundress, who was really um, brought up in a very classical way at, at the Abbey of Notre Dame de Joire, um, I responded to the chant and I pointed out something to her that I loved, one little phrase about a month after I entered. And she asked me, do you wanna learn more? And I said, I do. So she took me by myself and she said, well, I wanna hear your voice. Would you sing something for me? So didn't I sing Billie Holiday, The Man I Love? And here she was, you know, this classical, uh, very contained woman that she was she, she didn't say, oh, what is this? She just said, well, well, that's a nice song. And she got to hear my voice. But that was one of the things that I think um, is very unique to the Abbey uh, that was so important is that you arrived with the music that you were used to, you know, and it wasn't frowned upon because what we do is we take that energy. For instance, you know, I was most familiar with rock and roll. You know, my brother played at Woodstock. I love rock and roll and, um, you know, the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix and James Brown, I saw them all. And so I loved that music. But one of the things we tried to talk about at the Abbey is what is the drive under something? And when we were trying to figure out what is it on a primitive level that you, is under chant, not, not talk about the technique and the modes and the scales, and what we came up with was this phrase, it's a primitive diaphragmatic cry. And I think, you know, you mentioned um, the amount of suicide and the, the pain that people are feeling. Chant can integrate a cry, you know? And sometimes I think when people think I'm singing church music, it's like from the neck up. And that is not what that music should be. You have to give your whole, body to it and your soul and your voice to that. So what the community did is take sort of that raw material that many of us brought and formed it in chant. And that's something I do as a chant teacher. So that then you learn to read music and it's um, the rhythm of Gregorian is critical and it's the relationship between the Latin accent and the rhythm of the chant that makes it brilliant, but also it's modal music. And that is something um, I would suggest if people can find it is to watch Leonard Bernstein's Young People's Concerts. They were from the 60s where he talks about what is a mode. And basically he was explaining to them that his daughter had been trying to play the chords of a Beatles song on her guitar. And he said, you can't because it's modal music. This is music that many uh, musicians were picking up in the 60s, but it's music that was much more ancient than the modes that we knew, the, the modern modes, you know. So this music was more ancient than Bach and Brahms. And 
it's basically what gives it a quality that grabs you is because of the modal scales where the intervals of the half and whole steps are, that is what gives the quality of each mode an emotion, you know, that you can't describe. So I think that's one of the, um, the wonderful things for us was being accepted for who we were and then being formed in this classical way of music. 